with him. So as I've just told you, this poem, Amanda, what is it about? It's about, yes, screen time. We get a lot of uh, instructions regarding that to reduce our screen time. So we do start reducing our screen time. Something happens, we're back at home again. Again, the online classes begin, isn't it, right? So yes, so nowadays screen time, we can say it is just uh, simply out of our control, right? But yeah, we can manage it somehow or the other. So as teenagers, as adolescents, as youngsters, we face this continuous problem when parents tell us what to do and what not to do. And sometimes you feel, I want to escape from this situation, right? So do you ever believe, think that, okay, why can't I just get a moment's peace? Why, why can't I just... Uh, be allowed to do things the way I want to do. There are times, you know, yeah, we are trying to be very good, good children, but in our heart of hearts, we want that little bit of freedom. Don't you? Yes, you do. Now here, this little girl in this poem is like this. She's like you. And uh, her mother is like everybody's mother and uh, always giving instructions and telling what to do and what not to do, right? So let's look at this poem. First, you'll just read it. And then we'll see how you relate to it, okay? Let's see what you're able to understand. Don't bite your nails, Amanda. Don't hunch your shoulders, Amanda. Stop that slouching and sit up straight, Amanda. There's a languid emerald sea where the sole inhabitant is me. A mermaid drifting blissfully. Did you finish your homework, Amanda? Did you tidy your room, Amanda? I thought I told you to clean your shoes, Amanda. I'm an orphan roaming the street. I pattern soft dust with my hushed bare feet. The silence is golden. The freedom is sweet. Don't eat that chocolate, Amanda. Remember your acne, Amanda. Will you please look at me when I'm speaking to you, Amanda? I am Rapunzel. I have not a care. Life in a tar is tranquil and rare. I'll certainly never let down my bright hair. Stop that sulking at once, Amanda. You're always so moody, Amanda. Anyone would think that I nagged you, Amanda. Okay, now let's come back to the beginning of the poem. Right. Now, already look at your books, please. All of you look at your books, please. Now there are, you know, like one of the stanzas is in the brackets, it's in the parenthesis, right? Who do you think are the speakers in this poem? First stanza, who do you think is there? Don't bite your nails, Amanda. Don't hunch your shoulders, Amanda. Yes, it's the mother. Could be the mother, could be the father. It's a parent, isn't it? Right? Yes, her parents are there telling her. Now here, the stanza which is there in the brackets. Who do you think, whose thoughts are these? There is a languid emerald sea where the sole inhabitant is me, a mermaid drifting blissfully. It's Amanda, right? What is the difference in both these stanzas? Right? Who is actually speaking? Who, whose words can we listen? Mother, yes. And what about Amanda? What about Amanda? Does she speak up? How does she react? Is she like you? Isn't it? She's like you all? Is it? Right? So she is thinking. And what are her thoughts? What is her reaction to her mother's nagging? She's telling her, don't do this, do this, do that, don't do that. Always. What is her reaction? What kind of response is it? Does she answer back? Does she answer back? No, she does not answer back. What does she do? She just goes off into her world of imagination. And what does she long for? 
in all her thoughts, whatever she has imagined, right? So she has imagined herself to be a mermaid. She's imagined herself to be an orphan, right? Then she has imagined herself to be Rapunzel. What do you think it is that she's seeking? She's seeking freedom and she's seeking peace. Kahi dur, you know, like, and of course, uh, I know big, big dhamkis we give, right? So just to wait till I grow up and then I'm going to go so far away where you won't be able to scold me, where you won't be able to say anything to me. Isn't it? Right? Am I right or am I wrong? Yes, ma'am, you're right. We think like that. Yeah, we're going to go where we cannot be disturbed. Isn't it? Right? And nowadays what we have, we have many ways which we can shut ourselves from the rest of the world. We have something called, what do you put in your ears? Right? You don't hear anything at all. You lost in your own music and you lost in your all. Yes, so we have a way of escape. So what is Amanda's solution to this problem? Amanda's solution is her imagination. She imagines herself to be in a faraway place where mother would not come and nag her. She would not come and tell her, do this, do that, okay? Right, so now let us look at the poem. It's a very easy, simple poem, but yes, of course, it is very, very relatable. I, we can relate with Amanda. We understand how she feels because as youngsters, as teenagers, you might have also gone through these phases someday or the other. Don't bite your nails, Amanda. Don't hunch your shoulders, Amanda. Hunch means, what's hunch? Don't bend like that. Nowadays, many of us are like this, you know, feel we're going to get to that uh, hunchback only. Right? And why? Because we're always bent over our screens. We don't sit properly. Don't hunch your shoulders. So don't bend over like that. Stop that slouching and sit up straight, Amanda. So what is Amanda getting instructions to do or not to do? What are the things that she's not supposed to do? She's not supposed to bite her nails. She's not supposed to hunch her shoulders. Stop that slouching. You know, don't slouch like this or like that. You know, go back into your chair or leaning over too much. Sit in a nice proper posture. That is always what we keep on telling you, right? So your posture has to be good. So, right. So what are the things that she is not supposed to do? These are the things, right? And who is telling her? Yes, it could be her mother telling her okay now what is amanda's response there's a language emerald sea where the sole inhabitant is me a mermaid drifting blissful what does she think where does she want to be mother's telling her don't do this don't do this don't do this and where does amanda go amanda imagines herself to be a mermaid right and where is she? She's just drifting in this very peacefully flowing emerald sea. So clear waters and far away. And she is there away from her mother and she is in the sea. What's a mermaid? What's a mermaid? Yes? What's a mermaid? You can tell me. Mermaid is a fish, is it? It's an imaginary human fish. What's a mermaid? Yes, so it's like what? It's half human and half fish, right? And so we have mermaid and we talk about mermen. Yes, so it looks like a human with a fish tail. So it is what the upper body is that of a human and the lower part. Yes, it has the tail and the scales and all and it looks like a fish. So mermaid, half human and half fish. Okay. And yes, yeah, so what have we heard about mermaids? Uh, are they real creatures or imagination? Yes, it's an imaginary creature. Yes, Dhruv Gupta, absolutely. It's imaginary. Are these other imaginary creatures that we think about? Right? So we have, uh, we talk about unicorns. Yes. We talk about uh, fairies. We talk about uh, what wizards and even right we have centaurs also 
right? Yeah, so half man and half horse, isn't it? So there are many imaginary creatures. Yes, so centaur is there. Right, so what will happen to Amanda if she is a mermaid? How will her life be better if she's a mermaid? Yes, she will live in peace. Where would the mermaid be? Where would the mermaid be? The mermaid would be in the sea, right? And drifting and without any worries. And do you think the mermaid's mother is going to tell her, do this and do that, swim properly and stay near the shore and things like that, is it? So she's not going to get any kind of instructions. She's going to be free and she's going to get independent. Okay, now as teenagers, yes, it is very, very important that we parents also realize that you need to be treated as a respectable person, right? We should understand your needs, your dignity, and constantly going after the children, it is not going to make them listen, it is going to make them what? You will become stubborn, isn't it? And look at this child going to an extreme, and I want to be a mermaid, nothing less. And where am I going to be? In the emerald sea. What is emerald? What the color is emerald? Yes. What color is emerald? Yes. What? It's green, isn't it? Right. So it is green and... Uh, Yes, so that is there and she is there drifting in the sea and she wants to be away from the nagging of her mother. Drifting blissfully. What is blissfully? Blissfully means happily. Okay, right. So let's look at the poem. There's a languid emerald sea. So languid, right? So that peaceful flowing emerald, that green color water. Soul. Soul means only inhabitant. So will there be other people around? Will there be other things around? No. Who would be there? Amanda would be there. The sole person in that sea. And what will she enjoy? She'll enjoy her peace. She'll enjoy her silence. She will enjoy her freedom. Okay? Right. Did you finish your homework, Amanda? Did you tidy your room, Amanda? I thought I told you to clean your shoes, Amanda. Who's the speaker here? Who's the speaker? Once again, mother. What is she expecting Amanda to do? To finish her homework, to clean up her room, and to clean up her shoes. Okay? And do you think Amanda has done any of these things? Do you think she has? No, she hasn't. That is why mother has to tell her again and Again, yeah, so it is one of her parents and she's there telling her to do all these things. And Amanda is also very great. Even she's not listening. That is why her mother is telling her again and again. So what is Amanda's response? I am an orphan. Who's an orphan? Who's an orphan? A child without parents. Roaming the street. So she is not thinking something, uh, you know, like what midway or so, it's just an extreme reaction. So what is it? She feels how nice life would be without parents. Is it? No, it is not. But she is imagining this extreme situation. I am an orphan roaming the street. I pattern soft dust with my hushed bare feet. The silence is golden. The freedom is sweet. So she's an orphan and she's roaming the streets. How is she roaming the streets? She's bare feet. Why is she barefoot? Because she has no one to take care of her. There's no one who's going to buy her things. There's no one who's going to take care of her. She's not, but she is happy. Why? She's roaming around in her bare feet, her dusty feet. Pattern soft dust with my hushed bare feet, right? Otherwise, nobody's going to allow her to walk in the dust. Nobody's going to let her walk bare feet and always emphasizing on cleanliness. No, she's not wearing shoes at all because she would have to clean her shoes otherwise, right? So she's roaming barefoot and she's walking around and she's going from place to 
place. And is she happy? Yes, she is happy. Because what is she longing for? The silence. And how is the silence? Golden. It's so precious. It's so beautiful. The freedom is sweet. Right. I am an orphan. What poetic device do you think is over here? I am an orphan. She imagines herself to be an orphan. It is what? Is it a metaphor? It is metaphor, right? I am an orphan. So please, it is. Yes, imagery to throughout it. Imagery is there throughout. Is imagery here? Is there? Look at this. So no poetry is complete without imagery, right? There's a languid emerald sea where the sole inhabitant is me, a mermaid drifting blissfully. So she imagines herself that I am here, a mermaid, and I'm there just floating along or drifting in the waters. I'm all alone. I'm enjoying my freedom. Here she thinks herself to be. She does not compare herself, but she assumes herself. Simile me kya hota hai? Comparison hota hai. Like an orphan, as an orphan. But here, I am. Right? Amanda is I over here. And what does she think herself to be? An orphan. I am an orphan. Right? Mehu. So, what is that? That is a metaphor. So, what is the device over here? Metaphor. I'm coming to the devices also later. Let's just enjoy the poem first. Roaming the street. What is roaming? Walking here and there. Does she have any fixed destination? Does she have any fixed direction? No. I pattern soft dust with my hushed bare feet. Hushed. Silenced. She's not making noise. Why? Because the feet are bare. The silence is golden. The freedom is sweet. Do you think Amanda is happy here? She's happy. She's enjoying the freedom. She's enjoying her solitude. She's enjoying her isolation, right? And why is she enjoying it? Because she is away from the nagging. She's away from the, you know, like what? Complaining of her mother, okay? Don't eat that chocolate, Amanda. Remember your acne, Amanda? Will you please look at me when I'm speaking to you, Amanda? So what are the things, once again, Amanda is not supposed to eat chocolate? What will happen, right? Acne, what is acne? Yes, yeah, so you, you get pimples on your skin, isn't it, right? So you eat too much of chocolate and sweets and fried things and all that. So what is going to happen? You're going to get acne. Please note this down. What is acne? It's your skin condition, right? So with pimples and all. So it's a, right. Then, so don't eat that chocolate, Amanda. Remember your acne, Amanda? Will you please look at me when I'm speaking to you, Amanda? So once again, who's the speaker here? It's the mother, right? And she, what are the things that she's asking Amanda to do? Yes, pimples on the skin. Very nice. Okay, so we have, right? So, yeah, so she's not supposed to eat chocolate and she's supposed to look at her mother. So, right, why is Amanda not looking at her mother? What is she doing? She's already lost in her own dream world. What is it? I am Rapunzel. I have not a care. Life in Attar is tranquil and rare. I'll certainly never let down my bright hair. Okay. Yes, yeah, so she's busy. She's daydreaming. What does she imagine herself to be now? She imagines herself to be Rapunzel. What is the story of Rapunzel? What is the story of Rapunzel? Anybody? Yes? She's locked in a tar, Rapunzel, and what does she have? She has his beautiful golden hair, right? And yes, so she's locked in a tar by her stepmom. She's kept away from the world. She's hidden there. And um, whenever her stepmom comes, so she just says, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. 
isn't it? And of course, the stepmom is there. She climbs up into the tower. And Rapunzel is not allowed to go outside, isn't it? Right? So now here, right, how does uh, Rapunzel wants to go outside, see the world? But here, Amanda as Rapunzel, she's saying, I'll be so happy in the tower. I'll never let my hair down. I'll never let my stepmom in. And I will be happy in the tower away from the world. So all of you, please read about the story of Rapunzel. You're going to tell me tomorrow about it, okay? And uh, 